Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, January the 11th, 2016. Here are our top stories. Tonight. You have heard of a credit score, but did you know that cops in Fresno are assigning threat scores as well? Then, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is in opposition to Obama's gun policy and Louis Farrakhan on vetting Muslim refugees. That's next. Government has gone into nations with money from our Congress to stimulate the dissatisfied and then arm them against a government that is their government. That's what America did in Libya. That's what they're doing in Syria. And the blowback now is they have created a refugee crisis that is destabilizing. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 well, it's a new year, and we see another layer of the surveillance onion being pulled back. And of course, this is something we've talked to you about for a long time here at InfoWars. It was InfoWars that broke the story back in 2009 about the Mayak Fusion Center. And that was identifying the threats that people might pose to law enforcement, identifying as threats people who might have Ron Paul bumper stickers on their car or Bob Barr bumper stickers. And of course, now what they're doing is they have software to anonymously accuse you and tell the police that you are a threat. Understand how important this is, how dangerous this is for you if you are anonymously identified by a computer algorithm as being a threat to the police and they're told about this, then you are very much more likely to be shot by the police because they are in fear for their life. This story from the Washington Post was picked up on the Drudge Report. The new way police are surveilling you calculating your threat score. And they point out that there's now a program that is looking through billions of data points, including things like arrest reports, property records, commercial databases, deep web searches, and things like social media posting. And of course, they don't mention it, but you know that gun registration has to be there. And of course, they're going to give one of three color-coded scores to the police to identify whether you are a threat or not. A big, bright red warning is something that tells them, be careful, this person is likely to kill you. So what do you think the police are going to, how they're gonna interact with people like that? Now they go on to point out and they say in this particular case that they start out their story with, they say the intelligence helped them to make the right call because this person had a gun. So you know that guns are going to be at the top of the list. You know that whether or not you're carrying a gun, they're going to have you as part of a uh, threat to their safety. This software is called the Beware software and they talk about it in the context of this Fresno Center that is essentially like one of these fusion centers, if it isn't, if that's not the name that they use now six years after we identified that. They say it's given law, local law enforcement officers unprecedented power to peer into the lives of citizens. They say, some say these laws are needed to protect the public, laws that would essentially give us due process protect our privacy. Those are people like uh, civil libertarians who are concerned about that. Why would we be concerned about that? Well, you know, a police state can solve crimes. A police state can help protect us against criminals. But a police state is going to be the most dangerous criminal you will ever face. And that's what you need to keep in mind. For all those people who tell you that they want to give up their 
liberty for security. They go on and point out that dozens of departments for years have used devices that can hoover up or vacuum up all cell phone data in an area without search warrants. Yes, called Stingray, among other things. And of course, that is a violation of your constitutional rights, regardless of what the Supreme Court or anybody else says. Clearly, searching your information, storing information about you is clearly prohibited by the Constitution. We don't need a Supreme Court justice to tell us that. And even if they tell us that it isn't, we know better. They say this is something that's been building, of course, since September 11th. That's the purpose of September 11th. Uh, but this is a senior staff attorney at the Electronic Freedom uh, Frontier Foundation. He said the first funding went to the military to develop this type of technology. Now it has come back to domestic law enforcement. Remember what James Madison, the father of the Bill of Rights, said? He said the tools, the means of defense abroad will become the tools of tyranny at home. And that's what we are witnessing again and again and again. This is the latest example of it. And of course, they call this the Fresno Real-Time Crime Center. That's the name for this fusion center. They said the type of facility has become a model for high-tech policing nationwide. Similar centers have opened in New York, Houston, and Seattle. They say Fresno police say having the ability to access all that information in real time is crucial to solving crimes. Well, you know, again, as I just said, an Orwellian government is the most dangerous criminal we will face, far more dangerous than one man who's a criminal or even the mafia because of the power that that government has. And, you know, if we make an omnipotent state, they are an omniscient state, I should say, that knows everything about us, that will be an omnipotent state. It will have all power. That's what we need to fear more than anything else. And of course, this is the bottom line, what I'm concerned about, what you should be concerned about. And in justifying this, they say, well, our officers are expected to know the unknown and to see the unseen. Total information awareness, right? They are making split second decisions based on limited facts. And so now what we're going to give them is a computer algorithm that may identify you as a threat because of your political positions or because you're outspoken critic of the government or because you have a gun registered, okay? You're now being anonymously accused by an algorithm. And that accusation can result in your death by trigger-happy police who are scared to death that they've pulled over someone who is a threat to their life. Now they go on and talk about another story that was on Drudge Report today, forget fingerprints, Wi-Fi routers are more valuable than fingerprints or DNA. Data collected by those Wi-Fi devices can find and identify criminals. They say fingerprints and DNA are key evidence for identifying criminals. We all know that. But now we have Wi-Fi. They say the problem is that um, the, this information doesn't stick around for a very long time. But they can identify you down to that device. Every device that you get on the Internet with, whether it's your cell phone or a computer, a laptop, or your desktop, Every one of those devices has an MAC, a media access control address that is unique to that particular device. Once they connect you to a device, they can track you everywhere you go. And they say, of course, they can't store this information. But of course, if, even if this information is not being stored by the Wi-Fi router in a particular location, that information is being stored by your ISP or it's being stored by the people that you interact with on the internet, uh, people like search engines, that sort of thing. That is why they enacted CISA as both a carrot and a stick for these people. Many of them did not want to turn that information over, perhaps, because they had a conscience, because they understood the risk that is involved to society, because they're libertarians or understand the issues involved. Maybe they just wanted to not have the legal exposure of being sued because they turned into snitches when they should have been just engaged in a business. So what the government did was they created CISA, and they said, you can turn this information over to us and we will protect you from lawsuits. And then that allows them to basically twist the arms of these com companies and say, well, if you don't turn this information over to us, then we're going to consider the fact that you are an accessory to trying to hide uh, these people or to impede our criminal investigation. See how that works? CISA is really a rubber hose to beat that information out of the people that you engage with on a daily basis, whether it's your telephone company or whether it's your internet service provider, to force them to turn over that information to operate under the lie that the information they've collected about you is their information and not your information. That's how they say they get around the uh, requirements to have a search warrant. Now, take a look at how this works. At the very same time we're seeing this information saying, look, they're going to uh, track you with Wi-Fi, uh, with uh, uh, doing threat assessments for you. 
We can see that a woman who was on a robbery spree of jewelry stores throughout Georgia, $4 million stolen in uh, six different robberies in five different states. How did they find her? Well, they found her through her cell phone. And the interesting thing about this is that even though this lady was robbing the banks without any mask or covering over her face, not trying to hide her identity at all, it went on for quite some time. They didn't find her by doing a face match. What they did was they found her by using her cell phone. They noticed in one of the surveillance tapes that she had a phone that she was talking on. They started looking to see uh, who was in that area, correlating that between the different areas where that was. The other thing that was interesting about this, I thought, was that she robbed jewelry stores that were chains that operated in malls because she knew they would not be armed. She went to places like Jared's or Zales, and that's where she robbed $4 million worth of jewelry. The affidavit alleges that the cell phone tied to her pinged off of towers in the areas where the robberies were being committed. Now, of course, it's not a new thing that the government would track our cell phone. Remember, O.J. Simpson was tracked by a cell phone. But that was in real time. What's different about this and what's different today is the storage of that information. The fact that they have a trail of everywhere that you have gone, everything that you've been able to do. And of course, that is what we were talking about when we said you have to be concerned about geospatial intelligence, about activity-based intelligence, about human domain analytics. When they were talking about mastering the human domain, that is the fastest growing area of the uh, intelligence community. And that is looking at your metadata. Remember, James Clapper and others were saying, oh, we're not storing all this information. We're not storing every one of your phone conversations. Of course, we can't trust anything that they say. Uh, but regardless of whether they're storing your phone conversations or not, the metadata is the most important data that they could get. And that's what they used to track this lady here. Now, at the same time, they are watching everything that you do. Of course, our government does not want you to watch anything that they do. So we have an Arizona lawmaker introducing a bill to criminalize filming the police at close range. Yes, do not watch the watchers. Do not watch the government. If you do, we're going to criminalize this. And of course, this is an Arizona, Arizona state senator, a Republican, John Kavanaugh. He justified the bill by saying that being filmed puts officers in danger by distracting them while they're engaging with suspects. And the ACLU says... Courts have previously struck down attempts to limit the ability of people to record law enforcement. They say there's now a clearly established right in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, most circuits in this country, to observe and to record the activity of law enforcement in public places is okay. Limiting that to when you're further away than 20 feet obviously infringes on the established First Amendment right. I know my camera doesn't work as well when I'm 21 feet away than when I'm 10 feet away nor do I hear it as well. That's the most important aspect. He says the law already allows officers to make people move back if they are actually interfering with police activity. Understand, too, that, of course, while the government doesn't want you filming the police, but they want to know everything about you, they especially want to know about those people that work for them, people who are a part of the system. Take a look at what the Defense Department is doing. The Insider Threat Program is surveilling hundreds of thousands of Pentagon personnel, everybody that's connected with the Defense Department, as well as contractors, okay, put under total surveillance. They say at least 100,000 military, civilian, and contractor personnel with the Defense Department have been subjected to, quote, continuous evaluation, unquote, or total surveillance of their electronic activities. They say throughout this entire document and, and where they're talking about what they have done, there's only one small mention of the issue of privacy. And they say, yeah, we're going to appoint some people to take a look at that at some point in time. Yeah, you can bet that they will. OK, now, as director of national intelligence, James Clapper, remember the guy who told Ron Wyden, a uh, bold-faced lie, and said, no, no, we're not really listening to people's email. You know, that same James Clapper the guy who has been at the forefront of geospatial intelligence for the last 15 years, said the system of continuous evaluation is designed to monitor electronic behavior on the job as well as off the job. So if you work for the Defense Department, they're going to be following you 24-7, everything that you do. And of course, we have a couple of senators, Chuck Grassley and Ron Wyden that I just mentioned, wrote a letter to him in June saying that there should be a 